Number one thing is make sure they've got something on there to stem the blood flow while you get them into a more private setting. You'd be wanting to get them away from general population, um, also stopping risks of someone slipping on the floor and anything like that. Once they're behind sort of closed doors, as to say, or behind a closed curtain, I'd ensure that they were comfortable with me assessing them and actually ask for permission to look at the wound and to assess. Um, as part of that, I would also check, do they have anybody waiting, like, out there waiting for them? That can provide comfort for the patient to have somebody there maybe holding their hand or just their presence. Um, from there, I would look at doing a complete primary survey and do the assessment. You know, I'll go back to good old university learning, Dr. ABC, ensure that we covered all areas because it may not just be the laceration. Moving on from there, um, after conducting that primary survey, I'd ensure that the hospital policies were also being met. So I'd need to make sure that I was protected, that I was wearing personal protection equipment such as gloves, an apron, um, you know, a mask if need be if they're also coughing and sputtering. Um, from there, you would then look at getting the doctor in to assess that patient. Probably the best thing to do is to actually get yourself a copy of the competencies and the code of ethics. So we've got three codes that we go by, and I've got them actually here that I utilised, um, and code of professional conduct, I'm thinking of the other one. And I looked at those and went, okay, what ones do I think they're going to sort of ask about? There's always one about privacy with the patient, always one about protecting yourself, and also following policy and what we're guided by. So that's what I did. Okay, great. That's good.